Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Bar Sciences with Shatrin Samati. And I am here to deliver my lecture from uh, biotechnology series about the DNA sequencing. And I will continue from my first lecture uh, where I left yesterday. And I discussed in detail about the uh, basic concept of the uh, basic principle of the DNA sequencing and the little bit about the Sanger method, the history of the Sanger method and all uh, related material and DNTPs and many more. So today I am starting my lecture where I left yesterday. So now I am going to discuss uh, steps of the Sanger sequencing as I have discussed that the required material for uh, the Sanger method is the single standard DNA template which is unknown DNA, DNA primers, DNA polymerase, uh, normal uh, uh, nucleotides are deoxynucleotide uh, triphosphate DNTPs and the modified DDNTPs and four types of the DDNTPs like the four types of the uh, DNTPs G, C, A, A, and T. So this is the overall reaction or uh, the method or process of the Sanger. And you can see here, I will discuss these steps uh, one by one. So uh, we need the uh, DNA, single standard DNA, or the uh, single standard template, which is unknown sequence. Uh, and we require the primers, we require the DDNTPs and depending upon the DDNTPs, the Sanger method uh, divided into the all reactions are divided into four tubes. Each tube contains just one DDNTP like uh, you can see here the first one contains the DDCTP, then the DDGTP, then the DDATP and then the DDTTP. Uh, so four reaction mixture are synthesized in order to confirm the sequence of the um, unknown DNA template or the DNA. So I will discuss in detail. Now the DNA sequences for chain termination PCR, uh, just I will give you the overview uh, for all the uh, process. The DNA sequence of interest is used as a template for a special type of the PCR called chain termination. Uh, this, uh, all these slides are prepared for those students who um, asked uh, for uh, the uh, notes for their exams, short notes for their exams. So I'm here providing you. you can easily uh, note down all uh, all this information all this information and uh, you can make your own notes so the chain termination PCR works just like the standard PCR and I have discussed the standard PCR which consists of the uh, three steps uh, denaturation uh, annealing and the uh, third one is a uh, elongation so this chain termination PCR is uh, work like that standard PCR but with one major difference and the difference is that the use of the DDNTPs is it clear so uh, there is just one difference which is DDNTP difference and we are uh, now going to uh, know the sequence of the unknown uh, DNA so in the extension step of the standard PCR DNA polymerase adds DNTPs to a growing DNA strain by catalyzing the formation of the phosphodiester bond between the free 3 hydroxyl group of the last nucleotide and the 5 uh, uh, phosphate of the next. Is it clear? So this is the simple uh, mechanism in which the uh, nucleotides um, uh, unite with each other, form the phosphodiester bond, but what will happen when the DDNTP uh, attached to the uh, DNA template during the uh, chain termination PCR? So in the chain termination PCR, the user mix, uh, mixes a low ratio of the chain terminating DDNTPs in with the uh, normal DNTPs. So the mixture contain all DDNTPs, DNTPs, as I have primers, 
So in the PCR reaction, DDNA lack like the three hydroxyl group I have discussed um, uh, required for the phosphodiester bond formation. Therefore, when the DNA polymerase incorporate our DDNTP at random, extension ceases. I have discussed this extension of the or the formation of the normal DNA uh, inhibit or you can say stop or terminate. The result of the central inhibition PCR is millions to billions of the oligonucleotide copies of the DNA uh, sequences of interest terminated at a random length by 5 DDNTPs. So DDNTP play a very important role in termination or uh, you can say stop the elongation of the DNA. So uh, there are two ways. One is the manual Sanger sequencing and other is the automated. In manual Sanger sequence, what we have from four PCR reactions are set up, each with only a single type of DDNTP. Like I have shown you that uh, uh, four reactions prepared one with one uh, tube with uh, DDATP, next one with DDTP, uh, next one with DD, uh, GTP and, and DDCTP. So four reactions in manually. In automated uh, Sanger sequences, what will happen? All the DDNTP, there is a difference between the manual and automated. All the DDNTP and DDNTPs are mixed in a single reaction. And each of the uh, four DDNTP has a unique fluorescent label. Just labeling of the DDNTPs in automated and mix all these in a single reaction but in manual uh, what will happen the four different um, uh, reactions are set up okay now this is the overall process of the Sanger sequencing uh, in first step you can see here this is the double stranded DNA which is denatured into the single strand and then this single strand, uh, what will happen? Uh, the prime uh, anneal uh, undergo the annealing process. Primer attach with that. Is it clear? So all these primers and uh, single strand unknown uh, DNA template uh, put into the uh, four different reaction uh, tubes, uh, each with a specific DDNTP like DD, ATP, CTP, GTP, and uh, DD TP, TTP. So in the fifth reaction, what will happen? All uh, the PCR, uh, chain termination PCR produces the uh, different fragments of the DNA and uh, which terminated at different points where the DD, uh, DDNTP is attached. So in the next step, what will happen? This double stranded again denature into the single strand and then this single stranded from four different uh, reaction mixture are the four different tubes then loaded into the what into the uh, uh, gel in gel electrophoresis for the separation of these different uh, fragments depending on their size I will show you how they separated and how we can uh, calculate or count the sequences uh, know the sequences so this is the Sanger method you can see here this is all about that four tubes and with different DDNTPs then the uh, after the chain termination process uh, the gel is prepared and the uh, uh, four tubes are loaded onto the gel I'm just showing you again and again in order to remind remind you and in order to uh, clear the concept of you people is it clear so what will happen in each test tube or in tube with different DDNTPs? There are four DDNTPs, DDTTP, DDATP, DDGTP, this is DDGT, and this is DDCTP. So four reactions mixture with different DDNTPs you can see here. In the first test tube, what will happen? There is DDTTP. So this DDTP, TTP, stop the formation or elongation of the DNA at a point here so just it will stop here and very small fragment of the DNA will produce because A is present here and T of the DD and DDNTP DDTTP which is DDNTP so the T of the DDNTP stop 
the formation of the chain termination or the uh, DNA formation here. In the second step, you can see here, this is the DD ATP. So A can stop the reaction here, chain termination here, or also the can do it here. So two fragments can be produced here, like uh, A, T, A, and if it stop it here, then T, A, C, G, G, T with here A. So two fragments can be produced here. In the next tube, you can see here, this is DDGTP. Now what will happen? The G of the DDGTP stop the chain termination at this C point. It can stop the reaction at this C point. Here and also here. So two fragments will produce TAG and TAGG. Is it clear? Now, in the fourth one, what will happen? DDGTP. So G, so, sorry, DDCTP. So in this case, what will happen? The C of the DDCTP stop the chain termination at this point because there is just one G. You can select your own sequence in order to uh, understand the concept of the uh, Sanger method. I'm just supposing that this is the unknown sequence and in all four reaction mixture in the PCR, in the chain termination PCR, these fragments will be formed, will be produced. Is it clear? Now what will happen? When the reaction is complete, now all these four test tubes, all these four tubes will be loaded on the gel. Now I'm going to discover, discuss the size uh, separation by the gel electrophoresis. Okay. In the second step, the chain terminating oligonucleotides are separated by size via a gel electrophoresis. In gel electrophoresis, DNA samples are loaded into one end of the gel matrix and an electric current is applied. DNA is negatively charged, so the oligonucleotides will be pulled towards the positive electrode on the opposite side of the gel because all the DNA fragments must keep it in your mind. Now, all the DNA fragments have the same charge per unit of mass, the speed at which, so the, what will happen here? The, uh, it depends on movement of the DNA strands depends on the, what speed of the, or you can say that the size of the uh, DNA fragment, the speed at which the oligonucleotides move or the fragments move will, uh, move, uh, will be uh, denatured only by the size, determined by the size, sorry. The smaller a fragment is, the less friction it will experience as it move through the gel. Is it clear? And the faster it will move. In result, the oligonucleotides will be arranged from smaller to largest. So we arrange the nucleotide from smaller, so I will show you, regarding the gel from bottom to the top. Now you can see here there is another sequence, which is unknown sequence, just suppose. You can also select your own sequence here. So here there is another sequence and you can see here and this is the smallest fragment. G is the smallest fragment uh, G, G, uh, which is uh, DDNTP containing G uh, DDGTP. So DDGTP stop here. So this fragment is very small and when we um, poured it onto the gel, loaded it on, onto the gel, the gel is labeled with all four uh, test, uh, four tubes. Uh, first tube with DDATP, this, this section is for DDATP, this section is for DDCTP, this section is for DDGTP, this section is for DDTTP. Is it clear? So we poured the, or you can say we can, we loaded all the four tubes mixture into the gel in this way. Here uh, A mixture, here C mixture, here G and here T. So you can see here the G, in the G line you can see here, this is the smallest fragment which move fast. And this is the smallest. Then the next is this A. This is the second one. And then this one C, then this one T. So you can say G, A, is it clear? C, now you can G, is it clear? 
G A C G A C now T A V T T now what will happen uh, then A here then A here then G which is here then C which is here and then T with A complementary basis so you can easily cal calculate you can easily know the sequence of the unknown DNA from the gel in this way must keep it in your mind the larger fragments are towards the negative pole and the ne negative electrode and the uh, smaller fragments toward the positive electrode of the uh, gel ele uh, electrophoresis. Is it clear? So you can easily cal uh, calculate uh, our count or know the sequence of the unknown DNA in this way. Must keep it in your mind, you will start from the smallest fragments. And if you load all the mixture here, in this way, you can easily count them. Is it clear to you? Now, now size separation by gel electrophoresis manually and automated. How? In and manual single uh, sequencing, the oligonucleotides from uh, each of the four PCR reactions must be four PCR reactions are run in four separate lens of a gel. As you can see here, four separate lens of the gel A, C, G, T. Is it clear? This allows the user to know which oligonucleotides correspond to each DNTP. Is it clear now? In automated Sanger sequencing, all oligonucleotides are run in a single capillary gel electrophoresis within the sequencing machine. So you can easily uh, find out how. I will show you here. Gel analysis and determination of the DNA sequence. How? Now the last step simply involve reading the gel to determine the sequence of the uh, input DNA. All the four mixtures we loaded on the gel, then how we can uh, analyze. Because DNA polymerase only synthesize DNA in the 5 to 3 direction, starting at a uh, provided primer. We all are familiar. Each terminal uh, DDNTP will correspond to a specific nucleotide in the original sequence. Is it clear? Therefore, by reading the gel bands from smaller to the largest, we can determine the 5 to 3 uh, sequence of the original DNA strand, as I have discussed in the diagram, in the figure, okay? Now, in manual Sanger sequencing, the user reads all the four lines of the gel at once, moving bottom to top, moving from bottom to like this, from bottom to top G then A then C then T then G in this way moving bottom to top using the lens to determine the identity of the terminal DDNTP for each band for example if the bottom band is found in the column corresponding to DDGTP like here you can see then the smaller PCR smallest PCR fragment terminate with the DDGTP and the first nucleotide from the five end of the original sequence has a guanine base. So the strand will uh, unknown sequence of that. This it, it's mean that it started from the G. So the unknown uh, DNA sequence will be C. You can see here, like this is G and this uh, complementary base is C. Is it clear to you? So the DNA uh, fragment starting uh, from the 5 to 3 end, so the its complementary will be this. So the unknown sequence is this. You can easily calculate, you can easily observe the unknown sequence from that gel. Okay. Now, in automated uh, Sanger sequences, what will happen? A uh, computer reads each band of the capillary gel in order using uh, fluorescence to, uh, to call the identity of each uh, terminated DD. And how? I will show you. In a short, a laser uh, excites the fluorescent tags like uh, I have discussed all four tubes in case of the uh, automated uh, are what? They are using the fluorescent tags in each band and a computer detect the uh, resulting light 
emitted because each of the four DDNTB is tagged with a different fluorescent level. The light emitted can be directly um, tied to the identifier of the terminal DDNTB. The output is called a chromatogram which shows the fluorescent peak of each nucleotide along the length of the template DNA. So this is the difference between the manual is easy and also the automated is automated is sequencing is also easy. Thank you very much. I hope so the lecture will be clear upon you people. If you still have a question, you can uh, ask me and write in the comment box and I will try my best to give you the answer. So I will be back with my next lecture. Till then, Allah Hafiz.